Hey everyone, so for today we'll be discussing about penetration and aspiration of liquids or solids into the trachea. So basically there are two terms, one is penetration and the other one is aspiration. This is the vocal fold, anything above that comes in contact above the vocal fold is known as penetration. Anything that goes into the vocal folds to the trachea is known as aspiration. So when it's just penetration, most commonly seen sign is a gurgly kind of voice and a throat clearing and a bit of small cough trying to eject out whatever material has come in contact with the vocal fold. While in aspiration, you can see a severe coughing, choking or coughing and at times even shortness of breath. Aspiration risk is most common in uh, neurological patients because there's a quite incoordination between the structures and also in elderly people because their muscles and structures are really weak and slow in performing. Now, if the laryngeal sensation is really poor, there are no chances of ejection of whatever material has gone onto the vocal fold or below the vocal fold. That is known as silent aspiration. The patient is aspirating or penetrating but there are no signs of aspiration or penetration. So this is a really crucial one. I would personally prefer to go for a video fluoroscopy, a VFSS examination than a phase to rule out silent aspiration because during phase uh, when the patient is swallowing the epiglottis comes and closes. So that is a whiteout phase in phase and at that time not sure if we can measure out any sort of micro aspiration that have happened but if we are doing VFSS we can clearly see what amount of bolus have gone into the trachea or into the lungs and we can also roll out the silent aspiration by looking at the patient looking at what signs he is exhibiting if a person keeps on aspirating for a longer period of time that person can develop pneumonia that is aspiration pneumonia so aspiration pneumonia chances can depend on different different factors one is how much amount of food is going into the lungs and second is if the patient is having a good cough reflex and there is a good pulmonary clearance there are less chance of developing aspiration pneumonia uh, third is what type of food is going into the lungs if it's a really acid kind of food there are more chances that the patient can develop aspiration pneumonia and also one major factor how much depth of aspiration have occurred whether it has gone only to the trachea or to the lungs so it's not just aspiration pneumonia that can occur due to aspiration there are other respiratory uh, complications also there's another one that is aspiration pneumonitis that's like an acute lung injury onto the tracheobronchial tree and also the parenchyma areas this happens mainly due to aspiration of regurgitated gastric contents bronchitis that is the inflammation of bronchia uh, that is mainly because of uh, too many uh, aspiration episodes and at the same time uh, the patient is trying to cough a lot so these are the main things you have to know about aspiration takeaway notes one you should know what is penetration and what is aspiration second thing you should assess in such a way that you know what type of liquid or solid and what amount of liquid or solid is going into the lungs if it's going into the lungs you also have to know the efficiency of cough reflex if the patient is able to eject it out and the fourth and final thing you should know what issue have happened due to this aspiration risk what is the complication of their aspiration factor so hope you like it